Okay, Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. So now, we will learn 11.3, Introduction to Particle Physics. So the first learning outcome for this subtopic is state thermionic F emission. So what is thermionic emission? Thermionic emission is a process by which free electrons are emitted from the surface of a metal when external heat energy is applied. So for the surface of the metal, as you can see here, here is cathode and here is anode. So when the free electrons are emitted, it will attract it to the anode. So you need to know number of electrons emitted from the metal surface depends on these three, which is temperature, surface area of the metal and also work function of metal. Okay, so application of thermionic emission. So this is for just for your knowledge. It is for electron emitters, television receivers, CRT ter terminals, and electron microscope. Okay, now let's move to the next learning outcome, which is explain the acceleration of particle by electric and magnetic field. So the first part, we have charge particle in uniform electric field. So we have two plate, positive plate and negative plate. As we know, elect uh, electron are accelerated towards positive plate, whereas proton are accelerated towards negative plates. All right. So as you can see, when your the velocity of your electrons or protons is parallel with your electric field, so bila nampak dia adalah parallel kan. So bila dia parallel dia adalah linear motion whereas bila dia perpendicular meaning you punya be macam ni and then you punya electric field is something like this so it is perpendicular so bila dia perpendicular dia adalah secara parabolic motion okay so remember electrons are accelerated towards positive plate whereas proton are accelerated towards negative plate so this is when your charge particle in uniform electric field Okay, whereas charged particle in uniform magnetic field, remember, your speed, your velocity is perpendicular with your magnetic field. So, when it is perpendicular, as you can see, your magnetic field is into the pitch. So, they akan perpendicular. So, it will be perpendicular. So, 90 degree. So, your charged particles will move in circular motion okay so that is for the second learning outcome for this subtopic okay let's look for the third learning outcome for this subtopic which is state the rule of electric and magnetic field in particle accelerator so apa fungsi electric and magnetic field ni dalam particle accelerator okay particle accelerator is a machine designed by designed to accelerate charged particles so there are the two type of um, accelerator so we have electrostatic accelerator dan juga electrodynamic accelerator so electrostatic accelerator they can use static electric field to accelerate the particles whereas electrodynamic accelerator Dia akan ada linear accelerator dan juga circular accelerator. So, linear accelerator kita panggil dia sebagai linet. Whereas, circular accelerator kita panggil dia sebagai cyclotron. Okay, linear accelerator linet ini dia ada menggunakan accelerating electric field. Untuk accelerate, accelerate particles in a linear beam. Manakala, kalau circular accelerator which is cyclotron, dia akan guna alternating electric field accelerate untuk accelerate kan dia and dia akan guna juga fixed magnet untuk maintain dan bendkan particle move in a circular spiral path ok so ha, yeah. so this is the example accelerator at CERN so and then this is the linear accelerator so linear accelerator which is we call it as linear it's a type of particle accelerator that accelerate charge subatomic particles or ions in to a high speed by using by subjecting them to a series of oscillating electric potential along a linear beam 
and then here yeah, so this is the few pictures of the Lynette operation okay so that is for Lynette so we also have cycl a cyclotron which is circular accelerator which is the combination of electric field and magnetic field so they are can use to accelerate positively charged particle to a high speed so kalau electric field dia apa function dia dalam cyclotron ni dia adalah untuk accelerate charged particle daripada negative plate to positive plate so as your velocity increase impart charge particle energy periodically so kalau magnetic field dia dia akan bend the charge particle in semi circle dia maintain charge particle in circular path Okay, so this is okay. But what is detector? Detector adalah device used to indicate the presence of fast-moving charge atomic or nuclear particles by observation of the electrical disturbance. So there are other electrical disturbance yang created by the particles as it passes through the device known as radiation detector. So what is the purpose of the particle detector ni? Purpose of the particle detector is to accurately measure the outcome of the collision created by the particle accelerator. So this detector are multi-purpose. It's designed to measure a different aspect of the collision event. So for example, one detector might be designed to measure photons and another designed to measure muons. So it depends. Okay, so that's all for that learning outcome. So let's look at the fourth learning outcome which is state the need of high energy required to investigate the structure of nucleon. Okay, high energy particles in a produced in accelerators are used to investigate the structure of nucleons, nucleus that they strike. So daripada de Broglie wavelength formula, the greater the velocity of the particle, the shorter the wavelength, the more detail that can be obtained. So remember your de Broglie wavelength which is H Planck constant divided with the momentum and we know momentum equals to mv so the larger your the greater your velocity the shorter the wavelength okay so you remember high energy to in order to get the high energy you punya velocity must be greater so in order for the velocity to be greater the wavelength should be shorter so we will get much more accurate detail okay next one indicate the standard model of particles so kita kena indicate standard model of the particles so we know we have matter dalam matter tu akan ada molecules dan dalam molecules tu akan ada atoms and we know dalam atoms tu dia akan ada nucleus which is consists of proton dengan neutron dan electrons so bila kita buka lagi kita dapat subatomic particles which is proton neutrons and then kita dapat lagi yang dekat bawah-bawah dia okay usually we learn up till here but there are others there are others particles such as fermions, leptons, quarks, bosons, gluons, muons and many others. Ini dia smallest. Okay. Dia not made up of anything and dia yang paling kecil. Okay. Remember not made up of anything and dia paling kecil. And paling kecil. Okay. The smallest one. Okay, that's that's it. So maksudnya dia tak ada dah lepas fermions, nothing else. So ini yang paling kecil. So explain the next learning outcome. Explain the corresponding an antiparticle for every particle. So an elementary particle or fundamental particle is a particle that is not made of other particle. So maksudnya dia tak made of other particle anymore. Okay, dia paling kecil. Therefore, matter ni is composed of quarks, leptons bosons, gluons, muons and many others. Okay, so that's all for this chapter. Thank you so much everyone. Bye-bye.